Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about a couple of different things which include about the terms velocity and acceleration. So we want to look at both of those today. So let's go ahead and get started. And one of the things that we're actually going to start off with was not one of those two terms I discussed previously, but is actually a time. Now, what do we mean in time? Uh, well, time in physics is the interval over which change occurs. So we're usually looking at a change in time given by delta t here, which is the final time minus the initial time. So t with the subscript f being the final time and t with the subscript o is given to be the initial time which we generally define to be zero. So the initial time will usually be zero and that means that t is representing the elapsed time. So as though you're starting a stopwatch and stopping it you're always starting things at time equals zero. Now that's not necessary but it does make things simpler in that you don't have a difference in time to calculate as well as other uh, materials. So let's look a little bit at now we've looked at time so first we will look at the average velocity which is given by the displacement divided by the change in time and we can write that as an equation as shown here and in this case delta x is the change in displacement delta t is the change in time as we talked about previously and we can calculate those by for example looking at the final displacement minus the initial displacement will give us the change in displacement and similarly for time now velocity is a vector and that means it also has a direction associated with it. So 10 meters per second for example is not a velocity but is a speed because it does not tell us the direction. So in order to have it in a specific direction we generally in one dimension which we're going to be looking at we will use a plus or minus we will define a positive direction for the velocity and a negative direction for the velocity and because in one dimension the velocity can only go one of two ways. And in the SI units we will be using meters per second as the unit of the velocity. So if we look at an example here where we take traveling negative 20 meters in five seconds. Now how do we travel negative 20 meters? Remember that simply means that we're traveling in the negative x direction. So we're traveling opposite the way we have defined to be positive. So if positive is to the right then we are moving to the left. And if we've done that in five seconds the 20 meters would be the displacement so the change in x would be negative 20 meters and the change in time would be five seconds. And if we divide those two we find that our velocity will be negative four meters per second. Now remember that negative sign indicates the direction of motion. So a velocity can be negative but a speed cannot. The speed at which we are traveling here would be four meters per second. That is the magnitude of the velocity. The negative sign is giving us the direction. So we are all know that we are moving if positive x is uh, if the positive x direction is the positive displacement in velocity then we are moving to the left in the negative x direction and that is all that the negative sign tells us. So you cannot have a negative speed you can have a negative velocity. Now when we look at the average velocity what we see is that that average velocity tells us only the average motion during that time. The actual velocity could vary. So if you're looking at the displacement over an extended period of time, such as say driving a car, well you might have driven for a while at a speed and then stopped at a stoplight and then you may have continued driving at a different speed and then you may have stopped again for a while for, to run an errand. So your average velocity tells you your average motion during that entire time period. 
your instantaneous velocity will vary. Sometimes you'll be going faster and sometimes you'll be, be going slower. So your instantaneous velocity could be zero when you're stopped at a stoplight. And that would be what is read on your speedometer. That will tell that would tell you your instantaneous velocity, but not your average velocity over the entire time. So let's take a look at an example here. And what we want to look at is a trip to the store. So what is our displacement going to be? Our displacement is going to be zero. Why? Because we went to the store and then turned around and came back again and we end up and start at the same spot. So there is no net change in position. If this trip takes 30 minutes, then our our average velocity would be zero. Why would it be zero? Well, let's clear this up here. And what we'd see is that our velocity is zero because half of our velocity was going in the positive direction towards the store. And then we had the same average velocity coming back and the two will cancel. So because there is no net displacement, the two velocities end up canceling and giving us an average velocity of zero meters per second. However, our average speed is different. Our average speed would be given by the distance which we've traveled, which is six kilometers, three kilometers to the store, three kilometers back. And we did that in half an hour. So 6 divided by 0.5 would give us a 12 kilometer per hour average speed. So there, while we can have an average speed, we have no average velocity because remember velocity is a vector and it has uh, it has a magnitude and a direction. And because we have we're adding two velocities, one going to the right, and one going to the left, those two can cancel each other. So velocity was positive part of the way and negative part of the way, making our average velocity zero, even though our average speed was not. So it all has to do with the fact that there really was no net change in position because we ended up right where we started. Now, the other thing we wanted to look at here is acceleration acceleration we can look again at average acceleration which is a change in velocity delta v divided by a change in time delta t like velocity and displacement acceleration is a vector it has a magnitude and a direction and its units are meters per second squared. So it is a velocity which has units of meter per second divided by a time and that gives us meters per second squared. So if we want to look at an example here we can say going from 0 to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. What is our average acceleration? Well the change in velocity is the final velocity which is 10 meters per second minus the initial velocity which is zero. So our change in velocity is 10 meters per second. Our change in time is five seconds. And if we divide those two, we will get the average acceleration of two meters per second squared. So our average acceleration would be at two meters per second per second. And we want to look at this and remember that acceleration occurs any time a velocity changes. So velocities can change for a number of reasons. The velocity can increase. That's what we often call acceleration. It can decrease, which we call deceleration. And we'll look at again in a minute. Or it can change direction. So an acceleration can occur when you change direction as well. And while we're looking at one dimension here, if we look at multiple dimensions, something in a, a circular orbit, orbiting around another object, would also be accelerating, even if its speed remains the same. So its direction is changing, so there will still be an acceleration associated with it.
And we look at again instantaneous acceleration versus average acceleration. The instantaneous acceleration is how fast you are accelerating at any given moment. Whereas the average acceleration is the average over a period of time. So let's take a moment and look a little more at deceleration and what we mean here. A deceleration is an acceleration that is opposite to the direction of motion. So here we would see a deceleration, which are the cases where things are slowing down. So a deceleration would be cases B and C. These would be decelerations because the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the motion or the velocity. So what is happening in each case? Well, in case A, you would think of this one normally. It has a positive acceleration because the acceleration is to the right. And since it's in the same direction as the velocity, it's going to be speeding up. Now B is the opposite situation. We have a deceleration because it is moving to the right, but the acceleration is to the left. So it has a negative acceleration and is slowing down. However, this is where we then we want to think about the directions and what we mean by directions and vectors here. Because we look at C, C has a positive acceleration. Acceleration is to the right. However, it is slowing down. It is decelerating even though it has a positive acceleration. And it is decelerating because the two vectors are opposite each other. The acceleration is opposite to the direction of motion. Now in the final one here, we have a negative acceleration because acceleration is to the left. However, it's in the same as the direction of motion, meaning that this object, even though it has a negative acceleration, it is speeding up. So the decelerating ones would be B and C, but one of those has a positive acceleration and one has a negative because of the coordinate system. So we want to remember that a deceleration is different than a negative acceleration. They are not the same thing. Deceleration does mean that you're slowing down because your acceleration is opposite to the direction of your motion. However, you can also have a negative acceleration with this depending on how your coordinate system is defined. So let's take a look at an example here of a train. And we have an example where a train is accelerating from 30 kilometers per hour in the first 20 seconds of its motion. So the initial velocity seen here is zero. The final velocity is 30 kilometers per hour. And we are trying to find the acceleration. So making a quick sketch like this is a very good way to start your any problem. It helps you organize things and keep track of what you have and what you know. So let's move this off up into the corner so we have a little bit of room to work. And what we see is what we want to do next after we started with our little sketch is to decide what we know. Well, we know the initial velocity of zero kilometers per hour. We know the final velocity of 30 kilometers per hour. And we know that the time increment here was 20 seconds. So always good write down what you know and that can generally help you figure out what you're needing to find and help you work your way through the problem. Now the next thing we want to do is calculate the change in velocity. In order to do this we need the final velocity here minus the initial velocity and we find because our initial velocity was zero our final velocity is going to be 30 kilometers per hour. So we know our final velocity or our change in velocity and what we now can do is use now that we know that we can use our acceleration equation to calculate this. So average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. We now know the change in velocity here and we know the change in time here. And if we divide those, we will get 1.5 kilometers per hour per second for the acceleration. Now that is a unit of acceleration, but it's not normally what we would use in physics. 
So you normally don't like to mix the units. So what we have to do is do a conversion here. So let's take a step back and do a conversion to get this all into SI units. So we take our initial velocity acceleration calculation here 30 kilometers per hour divided by 20 seconds and we do a conversion so we convert the kilometers into meters and we convert the hours into seconds so we know that there are a thousand kilometers a thousand meters in one kilometer and 3600 seconds in one hour so if we put those together then our units will cancel and we cancel the kilometers and the hours and we're left with just meters and two seconds in the denominator. And when we go ahead and multiply our numbers here, so 30 times 1000 divided by 20 divided by 3600, we get that the acceleration is 0 0.417 meters per second squared. And that is our average acceleration based on the numbers given here. And because our input numbers had three significant figures, our output will also have three significant figures and will be 0 0.417 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and finish up then with our summary. And what we looked at in this lesson was first of all, we talked about acceleration and velocity and how they are both vectors. So they are both vector quantities. We looked at deceleration and find that it is not the same as a negative acceleration. So that all depends on the coordinate system, whereas a deceleration is a slowing down. And in physics, an acceleration can occur when an object increases its speed, decreases its speed, or changes direction. Any of those will change the velocity which cause an acceleration to occur. So that finishes up this lecture on velocity and acceleration. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.